So we are here today in an undisclosed location because mushroom hunting is very serious business and uh, mushroom hunters tend to be very secretive with their spots. So I do not want to spoil anyone's fun and tell the secret, but we are here on the central Oregon coast hunting for mushrooms. Today I have my three little ones because it is so much fun. It is truly a treasure hunt in the woods and everybody has a lot of fun doing it. Do you guys love it? Yeah. Yeah, it's a ton of fun. And my husband is with us today with his bow. He has a uh, deer tag still. So in case we happen to see a deer while we're out here, this mushroom episode might very quickly turn into a venison episode. So fingers crossed that would be awesome. Either way, we're gonna get a bunch of mushrooms today and I can't wait to show you how to do it. Mushroom hunting is a ton of fun and anybody can do it. But there are a few things that you're gonna wanna bring with you when you're mushroom foraging. A bag to carry your mushrooms. Today I've got my Pacific Northwest Life bag that is made right here on the Central Oregon coast. Extra Ziplocs with you. Not totally necessary since you do have a bag to carry them. I just kind of like to keep my mushroom species separate from one another. A pocket knife because you always wanna cut the mushrooms so they can continue to grow. You never wanna pull them out of the ground. It's a really important piece of information. And last but certainly not least, it never hurts to have a little pocket-sized mushroom guidebook with you. Although I usually just stick to the mushrooms that I know for safety reasons. Uh, it's always good to have a reference guide just in case you come across some you have any questions about. first mushroom we found a chanterelle unfortunately this one is a little too far gone but we know they're here so we've made it this is usually where we like to go because the forest kind of opens up a bit um, and there's not so much foliage covering the ground so you can really see the mushrooms you can also see that there's a lot of fallen trees and logs and decaying wood perfect for mushrooms there's a chanterelle here and a chanterelle here. Okay, so you always want to cut the mushroom so it can continue to regrow. So we're just gonna move the dirt aside a little bit. Cut off the base of that mushroom. We'll leave that part behind so it can re-spore. We have ourselves our very first chanterelle and our very second chanterelle. Did you find this over there? See, this is what I mean. Like, this is a treasure hunt in the woods. Everything is beautiful and green and lush. And here is the gold in the middle of the forest that you find, and it really is a treasure. Nice, this is a beautiful one. <gasps> this is the best one of the day. And there's, oh my gosh, there's more in there. We just hit the chanterelle jackpot, so we're gonna get our Ziploc full of chanterelles out here. How beautiful are these? We've only been here a few minutes. We already have a ton of chanterelles. However, that's not what we're out here for. We're looking for corral mushrooms today. Uh, and honestly, I've only seen a couple and they were way too far gone. So our corral tempera udon noodle soup might be a chanterelle tempera udon noodle soup. We'll see, you never know. It all depends on what nature provides. How exciting! This is our first lobster mushroom of the day. I love finding these mushrooms because they're so brightly colored. They're really fun to spot. Oh, and if you dig, you usually find a few more next to them. So they really hold their shape and texture when cooking with them. And they have a really, really incredible earthy flavor. Gigantic one right next to it. Isn't that beautiful? I mean, this thing weighs a ton. This is a big mushroom. Can you identify this poop though? No, I don't think it is elk poop. Daddy, what kind of poop is it? Elk. Is it elk poop? Yeah. I thought it was too tiny. I thought it was deer poop. No, I think that's elk. 
Do you need to taste it or something to figure it out? Well, yeah, I don't to do that on camera. <laughs> so we found what we are out here for. I keep calling them corrals because someone told me that that's what they're called. My husband just corrected me, told me they're called corals because of course they do look like coral, which is why they're called corals. A uh, mushroom expert told me they were called corrals. So whether you call these corals or corrals, we found them and that's exactly what we were looking for today. All right, so on our way back to the car, we not only spotted that beautiful lobster mushroom, but we found exactly what we came here for. We now have enough corals or corrals, I'm still not entirely sure how to say this, for our udon noodle soup tonight. They are absolutely beautiful. I'm super excited to fry these up for you guys. So we just got back from the woods and we are now gonna cook our tempura coral. Coral? We still don't know. Uh, udon noodle soup. And we are gonna use some local rogue Newport Days beer in our tempura batter. And I can't wait to show you how this turns out. So we are gonna mix together our tempura batter for our tempura fried coral mushrooms. And this batter is very simple. I cheat and I use the Krusty's tempura batter mix. You can pretty much find it at any grocery store. And we're gonna mix it with some Newport Days rogue ale. a little bit at a time. Kind of want it a little thinner than a ban pancake batter. And that is it. That's all you're gonna need to do for your tempura batter. It's that simple, that's why I use that mix. So we're just gonna grab our coral mushrooms to dip in our tempura batter and then we're gonna start deep frying. First, we're gonna dip it in the dry crusties uh, tempura batter mix. That way our wet tempura batter sticks a little bit better. And I kind of like the consistency of it when I do it like this. And then we're gonna take it right over to our hot oil. And that mushroom is gonna fry really fast. We're gonna take it out of our oil. So while the mushrooms are in the fryer, I'm gonna whip up our soup really quick. And I say really quick because it is such a quick and simple soup, but it is filled with flavor and so great with these mushrooms. You're gonna start with chicken stock. Um, I use homemade chicken stock, one quart. You could also use vegetable stock if you wanted to keep this a vegetarian dish. It's very good with vegetable. I've made it that way as well. So you're gonna do one quart of chicken stock, one tablespoon of a dark mushroom soy, some green onions, and we're just gonna bring this to a simmer. All right, so our broth has come to a gentle simmer. We are gonna add in our udon noodles. Give those a stir. And then we are just gonna let this simmer for about five to 10 minutes, and it is done. Then we just place our mushrooms right on top. And there you have it. A corral tempura mushroom soup. And it's super delicious and a whole lot of fun to get. Did you have fun out there today? Yes. Yeah. This was a lot of fun getting these mushrooms. Yeah. And we got all these mushrooms. Yeah. This was amazing. So cheers. Yeah. Cheers to mushroom foraging. Do you love that? Yeah. So good. So this is always such a fun way to get your kids to enjoy mushrooms as well, because a lot of children don't love mushrooms, but when they get involved in harvesting them themselves, and then of course, enjoying their harvest afterwards, it's always a lot of fun. Do you love that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> For more wild recipes, be sure to follow me on Instagram at The Kitchen Wild and subscribe right here on YouTube.